Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today on the things you missed in Elden Ring, we're going to be covering the area surrounding Volcano Manor, including a couple of bosses, a fort, and a spell you absolutely cannot miss. So stay tuned for all this and much, much more. We're going to start off today's video at the Seethwater Terminus Grace, which is just here to the northwest of Volcano Manor. And right in front of us, you will see Fort Lithe. Before I head in, I'm just going to spend some time familiarizing myself with my new build. I've switched back to the Moonvale for now, just because it's so fun to use. And also, I really, really wanted to switch back to Intelligence, because since using Intelligence near the start of this guide, there's a few awesome spells I've picked up that I really wanted to try out. And also, in a lot of videos, a lot of people keep going on about how powerful Rock Sling is, and I've never used Rock Sling before. And oh my god, it's so, so cool. It staggers even the hardiest of bosses in like two hits. I also can't remember exactly which glintstone crown it is I've got equipped, but from looking at it here, you can just quickly look in your inventory and you should be able to figure out which one it is I'm wearing. But I will open my inventory and check the stats later on in the video because I loot another one and I wanted to compare the stats. So I'll show you exactly what it is I'm wearing then. And the staff I'm using, I believe is called the Lusat staff. And the reason I opted for this one is because it has an added bonus that spells cost more FP to cast, but also do more damage. And even a simple rock sling is hitting enemies for 600 to 700 damage. Also, I'm absolutely loving using Ambush Shard on these giant flame tanks, because obviously the weak spot is the guy controlling them at the back, and Ambush Shard always hits enemies in the back, so it makes them trivial. It's amazing. All right, now that I finish swooning over and talking about my new build, we'll get into exploring the area properly. There's nothing of note that you've missed whilst I've been talking. You'll see there's a few sacramental buds around the back of the building here. And now that I've finished exploring the surrounding area, we're actually going to head into the fort. Final round. And to fight this, and to fight. I just said defeat and fight all at the same time. We're going to defight this big bastard here. And when I say defight, I mean spam spells at him until he dies before he even touches us. And then he's going to drop a very, very cool looking two handed hammer. The prelate's infernal crozier. Crozier? Crozier which is kind of almost immediately making me regret not being strength anymore because that weapon looks incredible. And for the rest of this fort, you can get the Armourer's Cookbook 7 in the room down here. And then up above, there's a few bits of loot, but most importantly, over on this ledge, you can get the Fire Scorpion Charm. Once you've grabbed the other couple of bits of loot, we are done in this fort. So I'll meet you back outside as we carry on exploring the area. From the fort, head directly south to the giant magma pool I've just marked on the map. Run towards the pool to trigger the magma worm boss to rise up out of the lava, and then hop up on this ledge and spam rock sling at him like the sweaty little tryhard you are. And once that grueling, challenging, life or death boss fight has ended, make sure you mount up on torrent before you try and wade through the lava and grab the few items. And if you've been progressing his quest line, you'll see Alexander here tempering himself in the flames. Luckily, you can talk to him from way over on the little safe rock here and he will give you the jar, which is such a cool helmet. I love it. For anyone here that knows the player, let me solo her. This is the jar. I believe this is the jar that anyway. This is the jar that he wears when going into combat and soloing Melania for you. Grab the rest of the loot and then we'll carry on towards the southeast and continue exploring. I've just marked the four main areas that we'll be hitting for the rest of this video, and now let's head to the first one. On the way, check out this golden rune skull just floating in between the branches. I've never seen that before. That is incredible. Wait, did... Did you just hear my phone go off in the recording? Boop, boop, boop. Now we'll murderize all these demi-humans with rocks and katanas. Grab the golden runes from the tombs here. And then a little bit further up, you can activate a summoning pool and you'll see a statue that needs breaking. So prepare for a big, big enemy. Take out the demi-humans round here and head left into the hermit's shack. And here you can get yourself the roiling magma incantation. And then walk a little bit further up the cliff and said giant enemy will spawn. I now have a very interesting fight with this room bear. He will not run at me. He just refuses to melee me. So I was like, oh, fuck it. If you're not going to come into melee, I'll just spam rock sling at you. Luckily, one of his roars did break the statue for me. So I was able to loot that. And just pay attention. Just keep watching. Because about halfway through, I decide, you know what? This is taking ages. I'm going to get a bit closer. And he runs at me and he starts annihilating me. And I think, oh God, this was a bad idea. And then he grabs me. And just watch closely what happens when he finishes the grab animation. Yeah. 
What? Where? So at first I thought, oh, okay, he's glitched through the world, so I'll receive some runes soon from him dying when he goes out of bounds. Nope, I never receive any runes. So all I can think is that he got stuck in between the rocks below me. <laughs> what? We're done here, so we'll head east towards the second marker. A little bit further up the road, you will encounter a load of sheep. Don't mind me, I'm just saving the Welsh from themselves. And once I've finished with my little sheep genocide and taken out the demi-humans that were lying in wait, head to the town here that's just to your west, and you can grab a sight of grace in the craftsman's shack. Then I'm going to struggle severely to loot the item on top of the beams here, and finally get the pulley crossbow when I'm done. And now we'll move on to the next area. We're now going to head up through these barricades, and just behind the demi-humans is an abductor virgin lying in wait ready to ambush you. I've had a lot of very odd things happen during this video, and here comes the next one. She decides to just yeet herself off the cliff and get stuck in a corner, so that was an easy fight. Now that she's dead, we can head into the hermit village, killing the demi-humans and looting everything we find. There's a few of the demi-human mini-bosses here as well, so just be a bit careful. And then up on this roof, you can get a load of string. I checked the other roofs as well, just in case, but there's nothing else to loot up here. However, on the side of this house, you can get the prattling pate. You're beautiful. Just in this building, you'll get the errant sorcerer armor set as well, excluding the helm. Then if you head to the southeast of the village, you can get some starlight shards. And once I've dealt with these demi-humans here and this mage that's firing at me, facing pretty much directly west from him, you'll see there's some more loot over on the corner of this building over here. And this is the Hieradus Glintstone Crown. And this is where I can show you my helm. So the main reason I've picked the Carolos Glintstone Crown is the fact that it reduces your stamina rather than your FP. Being a spellcaster, I value high levels of FP over high levels of stamina. Plus, it gives me an extra three int, which is always nice. And the one we've just picked up increases your int and your endurance at the detriment of FP. With this area cleared, we'll move into the next tip and we'll go and fight a boss. You can see the boss lying in wait over there, another demi-human queen. If you're relatively sneaky, you can take out most of the sorcerers before you engage her in combat, which is what I try and do here, and it works for the most part. So we're going to aggro her and engage demi-human queen Maggie in combat now. And as mentioned before, holy crap is Roxlin good at stunning things. It trivializes this boss fight, it's stupid. A few of her little minions try and ambush me, but they go down in no time at all. And then shortly after that, she also goes down and rewards us with a memory stone and that memory stone could not have come at a better time because i'm about to find a ridiculously powerful spell that requires three memory slots to equip interact with the primeval sorcerer here he won't say anything but after a while you'll be rewarded with the comet azure which is arguably the most powerful sorcery in the game because of the fact that it's a comet that you can hold down the trigger for and channel to make it effectively endless. So I'm going to spend some time changing up my build here so I can truly show you the power of this sorcery. So now I'm going to go off screen and find a nice enemy to test this out on so I can show you the power of this build. I meet you back now at the giant stone golem we fought in the previous video. Bearing in mind I haven't even min-maxed this. There are other things I could do to buff this, such as using the Terra Magica sorcery or whatever it's called. So what I've done is drank a physic that means that for a few seconds my spells do not consume FP and they deal more damage. And then I can just hold down the Comet Azure. And by the time this guy manages to get an attack off, I've done over 10,000 damage to him and whittled down two thirds of his health bar. Bearing in mind, this is an enemy that's quite resistant to everything, so this isn't even an effective way to show you the true power of this spell. If you manage to time it well and line it up well, you can one-shot most bosses. It's just dumb. And now that he's dead and we've got the golem's halberd, I'll let my character do some of the outro for me and tell you, you're beautiful. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.